Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Reese the Psych PA and I am back with another video. But first of all, I just want to ask you guys, how are y'all doing? How, how have you been since I've seen you last week? Are you uh, minding your business? Are you drinking your water? For those of you that are part of the secret delegation, which I am a part of with Sarah Jakes Roberts, I just had to ask that question because I was just like, I've always wanted to do that. But anyway, so let's get into it. So today I'm actually going to be discussing um, things about legislation and regulation of the PA practice, things that you may or may not be aware of. And I find this to be fascinating because I was at a meet and greet up in Arlington not too long ago with a lot of other PAs. Um, the group that actually threw the event or the LLC was actually called the PAC which stands for Physician Assistants of Color. Um, Jazz and her whole squad, Sammy and them, they, they put on the event and it was beautiful. Um, I got a chance to meet a lot of other PAs and we had a chance to talk. Afterwards we actually went out to eat and um, we talked about how like they're a part of Virginia um, Association of Physician Assistants and how they had an event and how actually um, PAs are not on the same playing field as nurse practitioners meaning like uh, as far as like direct billing and stuff like that PAs don't get that and it's a couple of other things but she was saying like how the attendance and the cooperation for advocacy and um, lobbying and making sure that you attend these meetings and stuff like that and paying dues and such and such like she was just saying how there has been a lack thereof and I was actually surprised to hear that because I was like what like we're the number one growing occupation in the United States I mean there are PAs out there indefinitely but why aren't we getting involved more in the legislation I don't know I'm not trying to speak for the all the United States I mean there might be PAs in Washington PAs in Massachusetts PAs in California that do well advocating for the profession etc um, but I know here where I am in Virginia she was you know she's been a PA for like 10 plus years and she was just saying like the attendance and the participation and like the regulations and paying dues and participating and all that stuff from the PAs that she has seen has not been up to par with the nurse practitioners and that's why we're behind as a profession now you know I'm just getting in I haven't even been in a profession for a whole year yet so if anything that I'm saying is not correct please don't blame it on me I've had a long conversation um, with this woman and um, she's pretty involved in AAPAs and she's pretty involved in Virginia um, Association of, or, of Physician Assistants so I take it that she knows what she's talking about rather than somebody like me who just joined who just got into the perfection etc but nonetheless I still wanted to shed a light on it because I feel like it's important to advocate for your profession to advocate for your practice to improve the quality of care and how we're able to give it um, to our patients and making sure that systematically like everybody's working together as um, as a healthcare team but more so making sure that we're advocating for um, things for PAs, um, so I feel like it's important to talk about today. So let's just jump into it. So I went on AAPA website and I saw that in 2017 AAPA came up with this thing called Optimal Team Practice, right? And it's to strengthen the healthcare team. Um, and there's six main points that they made that I really thought was like important and eye-opening because when you're in PA school, you're learning all about like the pathophysiology, the pharmacology, diagnostics and things of that nature and what to look for and all that stuff is important as well. But now that I'm out in the career, sorry something was on my camera now that I'm out in my career and I'm actually like being involved in associations and stuff like that I'm doing my research and um, they made six good points um, 
Oh Lord. So I'm gonna try and get through this without like trying to make it sound a certain way. In no way, shape, form or fashion is this video to go against nurse practitioners. In no way, shape, form, or fashion is this video to go against nurse practitioners, okay? It's not comparing and contrasting because we're both mid-levels. Um, there are certain things that they can do that we can't do, or there are certain things that, that they experience that we don't. But in the same sense, the, at the end of the day, we work together as a team to provide quality care for the patient, to help the patient. It's selfless. It's not about who's better or a power trip. It's more about what can we do together to make sure that we're ensuring the best care possible for the patient so I just had to clarify that um, but anyway PAs do not want independent practice we are perfectly fine with being dependent now a lot of people might get confused because PAs we're trained on the medicine model we're trained like physicians nurse practitioners are trained on the nursing models and when they go back to school for a nurse practitioner MP they have to have already worked as an RN or something in their field and they have X amount of hours and all this other stuff y'all knows that PAs don't have that type of qualification like we have shadowing hours and patient care hours that we have to get some schools has, have even went as far to even do community service hours and include that as well um, but we don't have that so I mean nurse practitioners work independently therefore they get billed independently like physicians and all but to say you know PAs were right up under physicians were trained like physicians you would think that um, certain things have uh, have I guess autonomy like a lot of people think oh PAs they're like that they want to be um, trained um, they want to excuse me they want to work by themselves they want to be independent now we actually value the relationship that we have with our supervising physician um, we rely on the PA physician team in clinical practice and it's like a, a commitment so like we don't want that uh it would i guess automatically it would remove that physician liability like if that malpractice type of thing um but as far as anything else like just to make it a hundred percent clear we do not wish to work independent okay number two um, we do not want to change the role of the PA we feel like the role of the PA is clearly defined now with that being said this this is a double-edged sword because we know there's a lot of people out there that be like hey doc and then there's a lot of people out there that be like oh you're the physician's assistant literally so there's like this little disconnect and hopefully within the next couple of years we'll see a change and more people actually knowing um, what the role of a PA is but for the most part I feel like it's established legally and ethically like we're able to consult we're with other providers we're able to refer patients we're, we're included in the patient care coordination the continuity of care and things of that nature so rule number two is like PAs don't want to change the role of the um, of what we do like our scope of practice but in the same sense I've been hearing like a lot of people and it's been all over and I'm sure you guys probably heard that the name of PA like physician assistant might be changed to physicians associate um, personally, as long as we get to keep the same letters, I'm okay with that. I mean, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I really don't have a lot to say on that, but I just want to bring that to light because I know I've been getting that in my DMs, like, how do I feel about that? I don't. Um, another thing is point number three, PAs want to strengthen healthcare systems. So kind of like how I talked about the optimal team practice, making sure that the care is being provided, like we can work together as a team to effectively and efficiently treat the patient with quality care. Point number four, PAs want to have meaningful input into the regulation of our profession. So like, should we have a separate board made of just PAs to talk about what should like our scope of practice entail? Um, should like, 
physicians and other people be on the board or should it just be PAs? You know, things of that nature because we do have a medical board or a hearing arts, uh, a healing arts board um, determined and, it, and, and it's state by state. Like I'm pretty sure you guys know each state is different as far as what a PA can do and not do. And would it just be nice to have like a certain, I don't know, like scope of practice for all PAs all over the board so that like if I was to up and move to Ohio or somewhere like that like I mean if something that I could do in Virginia that I can't do in Ohio like I always have to look up my scope of practice no matter where I go and then of course you have to do your paperwork to get your license in that state and then you and the supervising physician have a contract you have to sign etc cetera, etc cetera. but would it be better to have PAs talk about like what PAs should be able to do what they shouldn't be able to do you know like regulate the regulation of the profession so I don't know it sounds good to me point number five PAs want a level playing field with nurse practitioners because therefore we are both mid levels and even though we're trained on different models and we both take different routes all ultimately we're here to like serve the patient we're both mid levels so um, how in like PAs like nurse practitioners are being hired over PAs um, due to the administrative burden imposed upon the employers or the supervising physician requiring PAs to have that agreement like what I talked about with the supervising physician and they have to sign off on our charts and certain things like that whereas MPs are independent so they don't have to really worry about all that and so we just want a level playing field because it's like okay we understand the administrative burden but we're just as capable as any other you know clinician and provider we went to school you know and i just feel like if we just take that burden away in a sense like i said in point number one we value our relationship that we have with our supervising physician but if there's a way to kind of like work this out to where we can have a level playing field where it's like nurse practitioners might be able to get a job quicker than a PA because of that. Like, I feel like that will open up a lot more lead way for us. I mean, we do have a lot of lead way. We can go into any specialty. The opportunities for us is endless, et cetera, et cetera. But I won't lie to you and say that that does not play a role into whether we get hired versus a nurse practitioner. So it would be nice to have a level playing field. Um, and last but not least, point number six, PAs want to remain valuable in the changing healthcare marketplace. So with that being said, like um, we're not eligible for direct reimbursement. We're just not. Like it's always as if, like if we see a patient with a provider, then we were taught that we do get 100% reimbursement. But when we don't see a patient with the provider and we see the patient by ourselves, you know, it depends on the health insurance. It depends on a lot of things I, without getting too deep into that. But we just want to remain viable in the in the changing healthcare marketplace. You know, healthcare is constantly changing and uh, insurances are constantly telling us what we can and cannot do and a lot of other things which i'm sure if you're in healthcare, it's like a broken record every day about the insurance won't cover this so now we can't get the patient this now we have to figure out blah 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 or blah 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 like it's just so much like i just i don't want to go down that rabbit hole but we would like to be able or eligible for direct reimbursement i think that's fair um, especially given that we work with a doctor or alongside a doctor or we're under the supervision of a doctor but it's indirect supervision at least for me so I feel like since I'm the one doing the work and I'm seeing the patient why not get directly reimbursed I mean I feel like if anything that can be arranged but you know I'm just getting started like I mentioned at the beginning of this video and maybe there's more to the story and there's more for why things the way they are I don't know but I would think that maybe if all PAs in the state collectively came together and nationally across the board and we advocated and we lobbied like we've been doing and certain other things like within our own state that could make a real big difference because there's power in numbers you know 
Um, but anyway, I wanted to keep this video short for you guys because sometimes my camera be getting overheated and she will cut off. But um, we made it through to almost 15 minutes of recording and I'm just like, yes. So if you guys have any questions or anything about that, I encourage you to go on the AAPA.org website and look at what I've been talking about under advocacy and um, for the profession, advocating for the profession and things of that nature and legislation piece and what's going on with the PA profession on um, on that type of level, on a political level. And um, I encourage you guys to keep an eye out for that. Um, I don't really know if the name change is gonna happen or not, but if it does, like I said, I really don't care. Like, yeah. It's not going to change my scope of practice and maybe it'll be helpful for people to not literally think we're assistants, but it's good for me. I, I don't mind explaining what I do. I take pride in it. But as always, you guys, I will check back in with you guys in another week. It's just me being real, giving my personal opinion, sharing my story, helping out whoever I can as I go along my journey and um, just serving as a resource to you guys. So again, if you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover, leave them down below. You guys have been blowing up my Instagram at Dream inspire life if you don't follow me please do and um, send me anything that you want me to answer and as always you guys I hope you have a great week and take care I'll see you guys in another week bye